I've got a session here that's got all the bits in it. It's not how I write. This is a Pro Tools session where we've laid back. Actually, if you were to look at this, this is basically how we lay back all of the demo. So if you can see there's, you know, all the strings are laid out, winds, harps, celeste, piano, brass. These are all demo aspects, but there will be, as you get further down, some elements that I would have recorded, you know, straight into Logic. Um, so there's me playing the guitar and, and then there's some also some program guitar and then there's everything else's program. So this first bit I was just gonna play you is probably the section that I had, kind of the moment where I thought this might be fun for this scene. And this is really just how it began probably. It wasn't here, it wasn't in this place in the movie. It would have been somewhere else, but I would have started with this little section, which I'll play, yeah. I don't even think I got that far. It was just that little section there. And it came from probably doing the guitar. And there's a like a, um, a Scottish snare a pattern, which I programmed. And this idea of like the riff, which started on woodwinds. I mean, I don't know why, but it did. And then as I was working it, I added that trumpet bit and I really liked the trumpet bit. You know, I worked so hard to make sure that I didn't lose that trumpet bit when I actually started to really put it together. And I just couldn't wait to hear the trumpet players play that and they just nailed it. So I start with that bit. Then I probably would have taken it apart and gone back and just got a little lesser version of it. Uh that very first time through the riff with the wind and uh, some pizzas, that would have been a key bit. And I'd be like, okay, I think that's a good way to sort of start this whole thing. And I like the idea of having a little module that went round. It's, you could do it for minimalistic reasons, or you can do it for passicalia. It's another way of calling it. This is not really a passicalia, but it, it's the idea of repeating something and it changing and building, and you put other elements on it. So the very first bit there that I played, that has some other Celtic elements that um, I added much later. I didn't have those at first. And I, as I started to take you know, a four bar loop and realized that I had seven minutes to fill, uh, you have to start thinking of new things. So all of these little bits would have been kind of little developments and they may not have originally been that order or in that place. Let me see if I can find some other bits. <laughs> So that was more of the Celtic stuff that I would have developed, but I would have changed key to try and get us moving forward. And then I moved a lot of that front part around to try and get it to feel as if it was really moving forward. And then he, he hits the beach. He, he arrives at the, Toothless arrives at the top of the, of the sand and realizes he's, he can't get any further. He it was almost about to fall. And where you put development and how you step through development, if there's an interruption, it's very important to try and get it in the right place musically so that it doesn't feel like you knew this was coming. So hence the, the key change. So I'm gonna change key because now we're really off and this is, wait a minute, what happened? I just, you know, you break right in the middle of it. It's very important to start the sentence and then break it off. And then it's much more expect, unexpected and people enjoy that more, I think. I mean, actually where I just got to, I think, um, is a really interesting section, which is that uh, I remember Christofari, I had a totally different section here, trying to figure out how you can, you can score <laughs> one dragon who has been following another one and has kind of hit this moment where he's almost embarrassed himself. So how, what's the sound of an embarrassed dragon trying to sound, trying to be suave? And I think clearly I'd not done it at all. And then I ended up with this because of a note very, very late on in the day and just chop it out and just slice this one in and it worked much better. So I would always tell you that I think notes from filmmakers have never done anything but make the score better. 
Sometimes you lose things you liked. That doesn't mean it's got worse. It means that it's probably got better as well. Even if you liked it, you know, tough. Grow up. You're getting paid a lot of money. And then you go and do the trip. I'd done another, I'd done a, a section later on that I liked, if I can find it. I like that bit. I must admit, if you know Sibelius, there's a, a bit of Sibelius in there. If you can find it, great. Write in, you'll get a prize. No, you won't. But I remember liking that bit. I thought, oh, what am I going to do for the trip now? This is funny. So I took the same material <laughs> and I kind of just ran it really fast. There was a great feature in Logic where you can just take, you make everything eight bars long and, and you can shorten it. And now they have this thing called time handles, which is even better. So you can just select everything in the edit page and then you can just squeeze it up. And as long as you keep it on the meter, then it's great. It's just immediately double, sp double speed. That's basically the next bit just cut in there while well, I was trying to figure out that section out. Basically between here and here, sort of was a, a giant hole for the longest time. It really was the last thing that, uh, on the movie that got filled in. I don't know why, but we'll keep listening and I'll see if I can think of other things that happened. So a section like that is very much just kind of treading water. It's like, but then the character is he's just trying to figure out what to do. And you, so then I got myself back into the the riff again, so that we could continue this idea. It's just like, well, I'm going to move forward. Now, all through this section, you're seeing uh, Hiccup is kind of making suggestions of what to do. And this became something that was illuminating about the whole scene is that this is a character who has always relied on his friend Hiccup to help. And he has always supplied help to his friend. Through these next moments, everything that Hiccup is suggesting goes wrong. So it's very important to kind of show that that interaction between them is going on, but then make sure I'm helping the audience understand that he's ballsing it up, this is not going well. So there, that's the, the advantages of a key change again People don't like doing key changes these days, but incredibly useful. Okay, so to me, this is a conversation where it's like, this is the old key. So it's kind of a version of the riff. So you're trying to figure out how am I gonna move forward? Then your friend, should, should, you know, you start having a conversation with your friend. And then basically it's like, well, okay, I've got an idea. How about if we did this, we could do this. So, so you're moving everybody up a key and all it's saying is it's supporting this idea of your friends coming in and, and you're kind of getting into a, a little conversation about how you might be able to make this work with this girl. So again, that idea really turns to shit. I mean, that's, uh, in fact, in the final version, I'll play you the final version just there. We, you may be amused by this, I don't know, but uh, one of the trumpet players, the first trumpet player, who's one of the great trumpet players of all time, fucked up that take at that particular point. It's a really, really tricky trumpet part, and he fucked it up. And he kind of was letting us know that he'd fucked it up by like blasting, just to say, come on, I wanna go back, I wanna go back. Because the level of the brass when they play, there's no way you could even shout or see. So he wanted to get our attention. When it actually came to recording it with the final brass, he did this. Oh. 
normally that would get cut out, but I I liked the way it worked. And I moved it around a little bit, but I just liked that being the final kind of expression on Toothless's face as he was like. Anything like that always helps if it helps the story. And in this particular case, these are steps towards the, the scene. It's then important to then carry on from there. So the idea is to, again, pause and it's like, all right, well, how are we going to solve this? Friend comes to the rescue again. How about this? So then we go into that mood. So again, key change is very useful here. Having a now established that we've got up another key, we come back down again. It's like, this still isn't working. So then he, he gets a little bit more desperate and goes into a dance, which I don't know, I thought it was over the top, but it made everyone laugh. So 